Hi there, this video is aimed at helping those of you who are looking to use Interbase IB Lite for the first time and to show you how to get it going within your projects and set up the deployment options to enable you to have all the libraries required to get Interbase to go to work. Now Interbase to go can work across platform and we can use either kind of the VCL for Windows deployment or we can use multi-device application development using uh, FireMonkey. Now quite often the the time that I'm asked around about IB Lite is to do with migrations from older versions of VCL applications up to the latest version. So we're going to actually just look at doing this with a VCL application. The steps here are exactly the same for VCL and FireMonkey, just obviously the way you bind to the controls on screen is going to be slightly different. So let's uh, start off with a brand new VCL application here. To start, I'm going to put down uh, an FD connection. And I'm going to connect this up to a local copy of Interbase. So I have the uh, developer edition installed. And I'm going to just go to the samples directory here and pick out the employee database. Now we can see this connects up quite happily, uh, which is good. Um, so we have Interbase Server running locally. And we're just going to use that as we just do the initial setup here. And then we'll look at enabling IB Lite um, in a moment. So the next thing we're going to do is to set up the physical driver. So if you just type IB in, you'll be able to find the physical driver links. Now as we get going, we're going to be using the Interbase to go. So uh, we're going to use the, the light version uh, and this basically means the deeply embeddable version of Interbase. Now the difference between IB Lite and Interbase to Go is just the license file. Um, it provides the difference in terms of what features are available as part of the engine. Uh, so it's very easy to upgrade between one and the other. The second thing we're going to put on here is the GUI weight cursor. And this basically just enables the, the cursors to work. It's a FireMonkey component. That's the only reason we need to put that. Uh, sorry, a FireDAC component. It's the only reason we need to put that in. And the last one is just an FD query. And we're going to use this to actually fetch the data from our database. So just to check our queries are working, I'm just going to put in here, select star from employee. And we can see that's bringing back some data, so that's all good. And now we just need to be able to show the data on the screen. So we're going to use a T data source to connect to our data set. And then we'll put down a navigator in a grid. So let's do a DB navigator. And we can just align this to the bottom of the screen and a grid. Okay, so let's just connect these two controls, data source properties up to our data source. And uh, if we go ahead and just reopen that query. We can see that that data is all picking up. So the last thing we're going to do here on the actual form is just to open the query at runtime. And that is literally all we need. So if we go run this now, we should see that it will work because um, we're using the local interbase server. That's all good. So that's a very um, useful thing for development and testing is to have your developer edition of interbase installed. You can then test quite happily. But now what we need to do is we need to deploy this and make sure it runs when we don't have interbase server installed. So First of all, let's just show you what happens if Interbase Server isn't running. So I'm going to open up IB Server Manager here and just hit stop. Uh, it's going to show you, you've got some connections. Are you sure you want to disconnect them? Y yes. And now let's go ahead and run our application. And we can see we get this 
navigate error exception and an unavailable database. Now basically the database engine isn't isn't available. So now let's go to the project deployment. And under here we're going to enable a feature file for Interbase to go. This basically enables us to have automatically deployed with our application the IB to go libraries and the folder structure that needs to go with those. So I'm going to just untick Interbase to go here because I do actually have an Interbase to go license on my machine um, from another project uh, which is in the redistribution folder. So I don't want that to be picked up automatically. So I've just unselected that option. Now if you have additional features, um, for example Midas, um, or if you're using kind of you know, SQLite or, or you know, DB Express, then you can go ahead and just kind of choose those bits that you want from here. And we don't need any of those additional ones because we're using FIDAC here now. So now we have got that set up, uh, if we go ahead and run, we're still going to get the same error because we're not actually deploying all the files yet. So what we need to do is we need to set up the deployment option. And the way we do that is by using PA server. So on the computer, if we go to our installation of Rad Studio, we'll find there's a, a PA server folder in here. Now this is where we can find the installation for PA server for Linux, for Mac OS, and also for Windows. Now this is very useful for remote debugging, um, but it's also uh, a very handy way to run locally projects that you're deploying in this manner. So let's just go ahead and install PA server here. Now the one thing that you will need to do as you go through and install PA server is just to change where it's installed. By default it installs into program files and later on as we're deploying application files and pushing those into a target directory within the installation folder and it causes problems in terms of the privilege escalation if it's installed in program files. So I'm just going to choose and change this location here. I'm going to choose a new folder on my C called um, PA server. And in fact, I'm going to put a, this is version 21, so I'm just going to put 21 uh, as my next subfolder. So just whilst that finishes through the, uh, the install there, uh, I'm just going to show you where the, uh, the license file gets installed by default for IB Lite. Uh, and also if you then get a IB to go one in the future where to put it. So under users, public documents, uh, Embarcadero, Interbase, Redist, uh, the redistribution folder there, you'll be able to find the latest version of Interbase. Um, here we have Interbase 2020. And in here, you'll be able to find the Reg IB to go, uh, Reg IB Lite. Uh, if you, obviously, the IB Lite one will be there, but if you get uh, your own Interbase to go, then rename it Reg underscore IB to go and pop it in here. And that'll then mean that you've got the uh, fully encryptable and uh, you know, supercharged version uh, available for mobile. Okay, so PA server's finished installing in the background. So let's go have a quick look. We can see on our C drive, we have a PA server, 20, and in here we can see uh, all our files, including PA server that's been installed. So um, what we're gonna do is we just need to run this, but we're gonna run it from command prompt. Um, to make sure that we can keep it open. Now when you launch up PA server, it's going to ask for a password. Um, this is just you setting a password for others to connect in. I'm just going to hit enter, um, keep it nice and simple. And once it opens up, uh, you'll be alerted to the firewall uh, access, yeah, just so it's fine. And under the target platform, if you go to the properties, we can now add in a new profile and I'm just going to call it local and put in local host as my loopback. 
and job done. So now if we go ahead and run we can see that we still have Interbase Server stopped but our application has actually opened up and has the data being accessible directly from Interbase um, which is pretty cool. So that's that's it that, in a nutshell. Um, that's all you need to do to get IB Lite embedded within your application. As I said, I'm just going to turn my server back on here just to help the, the development process. Um, but the deployment now, if we go and have a look at the PA server folder here, we can see there's a scratch directory. And the user that I'm logged onto this machine is, is EMBT. So I've got a, my username dash local, which is my profile name. And here I can see the project three, which is the name of this project. And in here is the executable and all the deployment files that have been part of that feature set that we've enabled, all deployed along into the same place. So this is also very handy if you're looking at um, getting all those files into the right structure to put into an installer. Um, very, very quick and simple way to do that. Okay, so um, thank you for watching the video and uh, hope you've enjoyed it and uh, looking forward to using Interbase uh, within your applications and uh, happy coding.